Okay, the second part are pontics that I, I, I love to talk about because, you know, this is something that, that happens a lot. Patients come in with, with missing teeth and, you know, it's always that question about what are we going to do because the patients don't want to walk around um, with something missing, especially if it's a front tooth um, and if they're wearing some sort of a flipper. Um, you know, throughout treatment, it's going to be difficult to align the teeth and at the same time wear that that flipper. So being able to have a, a, a system that will allow you to incorporate Pontix, I think is huge. And ULAP does that. And so I'm not going to go all the way through uh, Carmen's case, but basically, you know, she's class three. She's missing the upper right six. She's missing the upper right one. Um, and she is class three, but she has upper spacing, which, as you know, is a very difficult uh case to treat because you're closing space by bringing the anterior teeth back, um, which goes against what you want to do because you're fighting a negative overjet. Now, fortunately, she, excuse me, she did have some space in the lower arch that kind of helped us with that and uh, some class three elastics uh, is what we're going to do. So close the space, create some a little more space for that upper right one and class three elastics just to coordinate her bite. And she's, you know, uh, was planning to get a, a new crown placed on that lower left six at the end of it. OK, and so this is, uh, again, how she presented and how she came in. Um, this is during treatment. And so, again, you can put the the Pontic in and you can have it for the entire case. And, um, you know, it's just there and it's very simple, um, you know, way to, to set it up. You just click the Pontic button and it will put it right in. Um, and it's, it's very straightforward. And so it's there. Uh, it's not a lot of work um, to do with it. You can, in, you know, extrude it, make it wider, make it longer, um, whatever you want to want to do with it. And then I typically uh, used um, Orvance uh, wax is the closest thing to tooth coat. I used to paint um, the, the Pontix, but it just took too much time and I didn't feel comfortable giving patients. Um, I used to use it from Reliance. I forget the name of it. Uh, but essentially you just paint it on the aligner. Um, and then I know some people will use nail polish that they'll just tell the patient to do. And I, again, I just don't feel comfortable with that. So I like to give them the Orvance wax and then just pack it in. Um, and then this is what she looked like throughout treatment. And, uh, this is what it, uh, what it looks like. And so they come in these little squares and you just take it out and you pack it in. Um, and I just tell them just, you know, leave it in until it starts to, you know, get a little grungy on the intaglial surface. A lot of times it doesn't um, and they can use one per aligner. So it, for me, 10 day changes, it lasts the entire 10 days. Um, so it's not a lot of work on their behalf, but if it does come out, they just pop a new one in. But it's the closest thing that I found from a color standpoint on the wax front um, without having to, again, paint the aligners. And so this is where she finished. Um, with the treatment, again, we created a little more space. We were able to close the upper and lower space. Uh, she was treated uh, with, with ULAB um, using U-Design software. And um, now it's time to, you know, what are we going to do until I get this crown <laughs> or this implant in my upper front teeth, uh, upper front tooth? And so it, within the retainer stage, we develop a pontic. And there's a couple of things that I want to, to point out. So one, you want to leave a little space between the mesial and distal of the pontic and the adjacent teeth. And the reason you want to do that is when you suck it down, you will allow the plastic to wrap in a little bit. So you have a little bit more of an anatomy to the tooth. So if you create, if I made that pontic a little bit wider to where it was touching the upper right two and the upper left one, when you put the um, tooth material in there, it's just going to look like a big wide blob. So leave it a little um, narrower than the space so that you can allow the plastic to, to suck in a little bit more. The other thing is you can see on this and in this middle picture, in between the upper right four and seven, that little bar that's there, um, you know, it's another design within U Design that will automatically just kind of block out these long spaces and ridges. Uh, I know uh, before uh, U Design, I used to spend a ton of time with um, uh, what's it called? I use TKO now. I forget what the other stuff is called. But anyway, the little pink stuff that I used to block out all this stuff on, I would spend so much time 
and money, uh, you know, trying to block out these undercut areas where these spaces are. But within the um, you design software under the retainer sections, you can block out in approximals. You can put these little bars in um, without having to spend the time and, and blocking it out manually. But again, you can see what the model looks like once it's printed. And then for her, I use composite instead of the wax at this point because there's nothing to change in and out. There's no more aligners. And I was able to kind of get the color match to, to match her teeth a little closer. Um, and then this is what she was walking around in until she can uh, get her implant done.